Hey everybody, today I'm going to talk to you about stems. Uh, stems are one of the three organs inside plants, and like all plant organs, they have dermal, vascular, and ground tissue. So part of the lesson today is going to be talking about what the dermal tissue is in stems and what is it doing, what the vascular tissue is in stems, what is it doing, and what the ground tissue is in stems, and what is it doing. And we're also going to talk about how plants in general move water through their stems to their leaves, or nutrients from their leaves to the roots, or in some cases, nutrients from the roots to the leaves. How they're actually moving that water and nutrients through their stems. What force is actually driving that movement. So, dermal tissue first. Dermal tissue, again, always on the outside of the organ, and in stems, it's on the outside. Dermal tissue can either be cork or cuticle. Cork is the outermost layer of bark on a woody stem. So that outside of a woody stem is cork. Thick layer of dead waterproof cells, like all dermal tissue, protection. Not all stems have cork. Not all stems have bark on them. Not all stems are woody. On herbaceous stems, you get that outer kind of waxy coating. And that outer waxy coating is called a cuticle. Just like cork, it's waterproofing, it's, it, it's protection, but it's on a herbaceous stem, not a woody stem. By the way, the cork that I'm talking about here is exactly the same as the cork that you get inside of a wine bottle. The difference is that cork trees generate a really thick outermost layer of bark, and that's why we use them for cork, so about, it's a two inch thick layer. And then underneath that, as opposed to other barks that we know, the cork is thinner and wouldn't be good enough to, wouldn't be thick enough to actually seal up a water bottle with or a wine bottle with. Next, oh, I'm sorry. And regardless of whatever the dermal tissue, uh, whether the dermal tissue on a stem is a cork or a cuticle, like I said, in both cases, it helps protect the plant and helps prevent moisture from leaving. Because usually, almost always in fact, there's going to be more moisture inside of a stem than in the air where the stem is. And as you know, plants can't control water coming in or going. Water is always going to move from high concentration to low concentration in a plant. So that thick layer of waterproof cell seals the water inside the plant so it can't leave to the outside. Can't go from high concentration to low concentration. Vascular tissue, just like roots and just like stems and just like leaves, inside the stem is made out of xylem and phloem. Xylem moves water from the root to the leaf. Phloem moves nutrients up and down from the leaves to the roots and from the roots to the leaves. The thing is this, though. The tallest plants in the world are giant sequoias, and they can be 300 feet tall, 30 stories tall actually taller than most skyscrapers were up until the 1950s or 60s. And those giant plants, those super tall plants, even oak trees that are only 60 feet tall, let's say, six stories, they pump hundreds of gallons of water from their roots 60 feet into the air and use it for the light reaction and photosynthesis without making a sound. In fact, every single day, a full-sized oak tree pumps about a thousand gallons of water into the air. That's 8,000 pounds of water directly upwards six stories. I can't carry two five-gallon buckets up a flight of stairs without huffing and puffing and taking a rest. And somehow plants, oak trees, do many, many, many times that mass of water literally 8,000 pounds of water straight up into the air every single day without making a sound. How does that happen? How are they able to do that? Well, there's three forces that allow water to move up a plant. The first is called root pressure. Root pressure is literally just the pressure created from water moving into the root. As you know, water moves from areas of high concentration to low. That's usually high outside the root, low inside the root. So water kind of pushes its way into the root. And as a result, it sort of pushes its way up the stem a little bit too. That act of pushing its way into the root helps it push its way up the stem a little bit. 
Unfortunately, this is only about a centimeter's worth of vertical movement. So if plants only used root pressure to move water up themselves completely silently, that would mean that they would only be able to be a centimeter high. Plants are taller than that, so there must be other forces. The next is a force known as capillary action. This is water's ability to climb up a thin tube. And you may have seen this at the doctor's office when they prick your finger to take your blood. They hold that really thin glass tube up to the drop of blood on your finger. And then the, 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 the blood just gets sucked up that tube. That's capillary action. That tube is really, really thin. And as a result, the water inside your blood just gets sucked up into it. And as you see by this picture, the thinner the tube, the higher the water will naturally climb up that tube completely silently. But a lot like root pressure, this doesn't account for very much vertical distance. Even infinitely thin tubes can only move water up about a couple of inches. And so, a lot like capillary action, a lot like root pressure, both root pressure and capillary action really only together can account for about a foot of movement up a plant. So what about those other 299 feet? What's sucking that water up those other 299 feet in the case of a sequoia? The answer is transpiration. Transpiration is the largest force of movement of water in a plant. Most water moves through a plant via transpiration. That is to say that transpiration, well beyond the other two, is the main way that plants use water to suck water up through the roots and out through the leaves. Transpiration works by just pulling water along with it as it's lost through the leaves via photosynthesis. Think of water as or water as it's sucked up through the roots as a bunch of guys tied to each other via the waist. As this guy falls out of the leaf, literally leaves, it's, this guy is literally going to pull all of these guys up after him. Water molecules are linked together like this. They're literally bound together as though they were bound at the waist. So as some water is lost through the top of the plant through the leaves, that loss of water literally draws more water up through the roots. And as water is constantly lost through the leaves throughout the day, more water is constantly being drawn up through the roots. Capillary action and repressure account for together about a foot. Transpiration, the main force that moves water up a plant, accounts for the remaining 299 feet of water movement in a plant. This is how we believe water moves up a plant in complete silence every single day, thousands and thousands of gallons. Last, we have ground tissue in the stems. So, the ground tissue in the stems is different than the roots. Instead, it doesn't have large vacuoles and thin stem walls. Instead, now, in the stem, the ground tissue has thick cell walls. Why would the ground tissue in the stem need thick cell walls? Well, again, why did it have thin cell walls and large vacuoles in the roots to help absorb and store water and nutrients, the function of a root? So what's the function of a stem? Support the leaves. What's going to be the organelle that allows a cell, a plant cell, to support itself? The cell wall. A thick cell wall helps provide support to the stem so that the stem can support the leaves. Now, what's interesting is that these cell walls are thick, so they provide support, but they're also flexible. Why? So that the stem can bend in the wind without snapping, because obviously if a plant snaps in the wind, then the plant dies, and that's no bueno. So you have a thick cell wall for support, but it's still flexible so the stem can wave back and forth without snapping. And that's the ground tissue because the function of the ground tissue always matches the function of the organ. So, dermal tissue in the stems. It's either corks, in the case of woody stems, or it's cuticles, in the case of herbaceous stems. But in either case, it does the same thing. It's a waterproof layer that helps protect the stem. Plants move water from their roots to their leaves with three forces. 
root pressure, just the force of water moving into the root forces some of the water up the stem. Capillary action, water moving up the very thin tubes that xylem and phloem are. They're just very thin tubular shaped cells, so water will naturally move up them. But the main force is transpiration. The idea that as more water is lost in the roots, sorry, as water is lost in the, in the leaves, more water is drawn up through the stem. Think of it as sucking water through a straw. As you suck water into your mouth, it naturally draws more water up from the glass. That's exactly the same way as transpiration works. As water is lost in the leaves, it draws more water up from, not the glass, but the roots. Transpiration, more than root pressure, more than capillary action, accounts for most of the water movement, the main force that draws water through a plant. Vascular tissue in a plant is still xylem and phloem. Xylem moves water, phloem moves nutrients, water moves from the roots to the leaves, nutrients moves both ways, either from the roots to the leaves, if the leaves, if you need to sprout in, this, in the fall or grow new, new branches or new leaves, or moves from the leaves to the roots if you want to store food for the winter. Ground tissue inside the stems does the same thing, same function as the stem. Provides support to the leaves. How? The ground tissue inside the stem has thick cell walls. Those thick cell walls are organelles of support. They support those leaves. But those cell walls are still flexible, so that stem doesn't snap in the breeze. Next, we're going to talk about leaves, and that's going to be it for plant form and function, plant develop and development and diversity. Um, and then we're going to move on after this chapter into our next unit, which is talking about the, uh, the evolution of plants.